There you go, brother. So the, one of the quotes, because I've got about a dozen I look at every day, and one of my big ones that I'm looking at, it says, uh, if life is under control, you're not going fast enough. Ooh. <laughs> I like that. I absolutely like that. So um, good stuff. Good stuff. And coming from a guy who loves to drive fast. Like, I, I mean, I absolutely love it to the point where I've, I've scared myself a couple times, but never been in any wreck. So knock on wood. But um, I love that. Yeah. So you guys, let's do this. Let's talk about the market. We're going to go around the room. I know Brittany, Christina, you guys are driving over to your CCAR training this morning, but I appreciate you being on. I see a lot of you out on the road already starting your day. So nonetheless, thank you for being here, whether you're in the comforts of your own home or whether you're on the road or wherever you are. Thank you for attending and thank you for being here today. Before we get cracking this morning, who's here for their very first time? I see some new faces that I don't recognize. So is it is it Kanda? Am I saying this right? Because I see, oh, it's Candace. Yes, hi, I'm Candace. I was in, hey. invited um, by Martinique okay. um, to join. So I am literally taking my um, my test in a couple weeks. And I was thinking about joining um, EXP and I've been talking to her and she invited me to the meeting just to see how you guys uh, roll. And, and cool. so I'm just like a fly on the wall. So. Love it. Love it. Well, welcome. And how do you know Martin? Thank you. Um, I actually met her on social media, on Instagram. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> I love it. I love it. She, yeah. her, her social media game has really stepped up in this last year. Her business has stepped up and she's just like, she's like putting it all together. Cause I've known Martinique for a while and she's always had like that tenacious spirit, all this energy. And she, I knew she could do it, but right? she was already a success, but it's like, how did you like put it all together in one big package? And now it's working for her. And now she's got momentum. And now she's invited another people like you to our environment. So yeah. welcome Candace. I'm glad that Thank you're here. You. And good to see you, Martinique. She's probably Anybody have any, up. any tips for me? <laughs> taking this test <laughs> yeah, here's the thing i'm gonna add you to, i'm gonna add you to our slack channel it's our internal communication platform um just get your prerequisites out of the way you have to do oh, i did that already uh, i'm actually taking cool. a test test the state test cool. in a couple here's of what weeks. i want you to do when is your state test on the 27th of uh, this month mm -hmm. okay listen i want you to do nothing every day two hours a day take practice exams get yourself yeah. to score about 85 to 90 percent shut everything else out and don't go into that test with any type of doubt. When you're looking at the questions, look at them, read them, cool, process of elimination, don't get hung up on it, move to the next one. Just okay. every single night, two hours a night, no matter what, I didn't drink, I didn't do anything, I didn't hang out with anyone. Like I just yeah. isolated myself and I put it on my ceiling. I tell the story, I will pass my exam my first time. It was in the bathroom, it was in my car, anywhere that I would look normally, <laughs> there was a note that I would pass and two hours a night, and then the last night before your test, don't study. That's just my recommendation. Don't okay. study the night before. Eat some good food, have some fun, maybe contact prep agent and work with prep agents so they can get you ready over the next week. But uh, if you study enough, that test I found to be easy. I had an appendectomy. I had an appendix taken out three days before I was supposed to take my test. They what? said, go take your exam. Don't do it. Relax. They had me on pills and all this stuff. I'm like, no, I'm hobbling my ass in there. I had a Jeep at the time. <laughs> Drove my Jeep through, wasn't even supposed to drive, hobbled my ass in there, sat down, took that test, finished it in less than an hour. And then they gave you your slip that says you pass, but you're not able to open it until you get into the elevator or outside of the office. And I opened it and loved it. And then within three weeks, I made like $36,000. So um, listen, okay. it's easy. Own it. Study, yeah. study, study. Yeah, I've been doing that and I'm doing the prep. I um, signed up with this course and it's a, like a two day you know, five hour a day crash yep. course that I'm doing this weekend. So yeah, I'm excited. All right, so, All right, we'll send you good juju and good vibes out to you. Thank is there, you. Is there anybody else here that's here for their very first time? Any Anybody else new to group coaching? All right, going once, going twice. Cool, let's uh, let's move on, you guys. So let's do this. Let's have a quick conversation about the market. I'm going to call on a, a couple people. I want to get your thoughts. I want to get your insight. I want to get your dialogue around this conversation. For the people that, that have not been to group coaching before, on Mondays, we talk about mindset, motivation, and intentions, and we talk about the goals for the week and what you're going to accomplish. On Wednesdays, we have a high-level discussion about the market. And then on Fridays, we do a freestyle Friday conversation. These are all kinds of different topics, mind, body, soul, spirit, uh, everything in between. So um, try to keep it fresh, try to keep it fun for everyone. So let's go through a couple of things that are happening locally in our area. 
I don't know if you guys saw this article, but BHG Reliance Partners in Oakland has now been rebranded to be Corcoran. I don't know if you guys saw that, but that is a big deal, especially if you know anybody that is, uh, you know, that is a decent producing agent at that office. They might not be ready for that type of merger. They not, might not be ready for that acquisition. Um, it might not be something they're ready for. So that's a big change for us, uh, for them, excuse me, they're right, um, you know, by the lake. So if you know anybody that is in that office and uh, maybe worth giving them a call, that just happened a couple of weeks back. So Eric, in your market, I know that San Francisco, you're seeing definitely an uptick in, in activity. I think what happened last year, I don't think I know what happened. Um, everyone got scared of the city, right? The pandemic, you know, caused people to A, realize the inadequacies of their own space that they had in San Francisco, and B, it opened up their mind to living in a bigger, more suburban area. Well, people didn't want to be in these densely populated areas because of the pandemic, because of fear. Well, now as we're getting away from pandemic, and I know that we still have our fears with the Delta variant, what's happening is that we're seeing more and more people come back to San Francisco. That market is starting to pick back up as a normal market in San Francisco would. So I got some stats for you guys. In the first 10 days of September, there was 477 new listings in San Francisco. That is the most new listings in um, at least 15 years in San Francisco. Why? There's a new demand. People wanna move back to the city. Things are opening up. You can go to bars, you can go to restaurants. And so Eric, from your vantage point, what are some things that you're seeing in the San Francisco market that have changed over the course of the last couple of months? Uh, so last year, people thought it was in a down market. We went up 3% last year and people, and that's the worst. It's usually 10% year over year. So it's kind of interesting that people thought we went down, but we, we covered with inflation. So that was kind of cool. Um, by the time spring hit, the buyers all flooded the market and the sellers took about a month plus to react. So in April this, this year, we went up about 20% um in the market and then when the sellers kind of kind of came in and reacted and, and put some more inventory on then it kind of balanced out and we're still in that same kind of flow where there's a ton of inventory there's a ton of buyers um just in the single family space right now uh sub two million so everybody's there's no more million dollar homes to be had you got to start at 1.3 so any homes that are 1.3 to 1.8 are going for 20 to 40 percent over a list right now it's getting really crazy but um, folks can get condos. Condos can be had. Anything over the two million mark. Are All right. And, um, oh, sorry. Oh, and um, yeah, and there there is kind of like a, a cultural kind of a renaissance going on in San Francisco now. The people that never wanted to be here gone, and the people that wanted always wanted to live here have an opportunity to do so. So that's I would say I would say ninety percent of my buyers from our Zillow buyers. And 90% of them are that. They're like, well, time to come back to the office and we don't want to commute anymore. We want to live in the city. This is great. We actually have an opportunity. And, um, and uh, they're, they're jumping in condos. My last four deals were first offered, deal done, condos, real clean, real easy. Um, so yeah, that's kind of where we're at right now. And we're, we're kind of expecting uh, not, not a slowdown this winter, not a traditional Q4 slowdown. We're thinking it's going to be just pretty smooth and, and flow right into next spring. I love it. I love it. And you guys, last year, we did, we saw an exodus right out of the city, but no matter what, and this will always stand until the end of time, people come to California and particularly the Bay Area because they want to live in San Francisco, right? If, if you have the thoughts of this, this convenience and shops and like, you know, nightlife and the scene and the parks and the beauty, like that's never going to go away. Yeah, people shied away from it for a little while. But yeah, I mean, Eric, you're right on with that. People definitely are still gonna always have that allure to San Francisco. And I'm glad that things are flourishing for you. So you guys, we have definitely seen a, a sign of some cooling down in the market, but there's no signs right now. And obviously some markets, there's some anomalies, but there's no signs of prices going dramatically down. Um, I was reading, if you guys saw this on Keep Current Matters, or I think I read the article, it says the approximate average equity last year, or this year, compared to last year, is about 20% in California. We're about $70,000 in California in positive equity year over year. So when you're talking to clients, you have to really dig into what is going on around us um, and, and what's gone on in the last five years to give them a full understanding of, 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 of obviously there's going to be some of that buyer fear and that trepidation that, am I going to spend my money and get into an investment? Hold on, let me, hey, um, Quan, all right, thank you, brother. 
Um, am I going to get into an investment in something that I'm going to grow into? What I've seen happen in the last couple of weeks, it, it's been really, really crazy. I've seen two appraisers, appraisals from our own clients that came in well over um, their, their, um, their offer amount. And we're talking, one was $100,000 over and one was $50,000 over, instantly walking into equity. And so the market is, is definitely um, you know, slowing down in regards to how many people are in the market, but prices, they're not really going down. I haven't seen it. So um, let's do this, you guys. Let's go around the room. I want to hear what's going on in your respective markets, what you're experiencing, what you're seeing, what are some of the trends. Uh, hey, you guys, if you guys can mute yourself because I'm getting some background noise. All right, thank you. So let's go to a couple of people. I want to hear from you. I want to hear your insight. I want to hear your thoughts and have some dialogue on this conversation. Um, let's go to Rebecca. Rebecca, what are some things that you're seeing working with your clients on your end? What are some patterns that you're seeing, some things that you've noticed that you want to share with the group? So um, I've noticed there aren't as many offers. Um, we are actually competing. We're not competing with anybody. It's kind of cool. So we're just kind of like, for example, I have, um, a, I have a client that I'm working with, Janita, they pulled the, they put the condo for about like 389, the comps, the highest comps around that area were 339. Um, so, but they don't, they don't take FHA. So we're going to do like a spot approval. Um, so we're, we're like, we can kind of come in lower because of the comps. Um, so I've noticed that uh, the market is shifting in that instance. Um, uh, and yeah, I mean, I just noticed that there's less offers out. Um, market's cooling down, more inventory. I noticed that there's a lot more houses that people are like the one bedrooms, two bedrooms are moving out because people want bigger homes. So um, I noticed those are becoming available a lot more. So Love it, love it. And you know, I'm gonna go to Ernesto in a second. <laughs> But um, hey, guys, if you aren't talking right now, if you guys can put yourself on mute, because I'm getting a lot of background noise, people are driving, restaurants, things like that. Appreciate that. So you guys, what I'm seeing less of right now, which was, uh, you know, we went through a really, really intense phase about, I'd say four to six months ago, maybe even a little bit longer, where every single house that you went to write an offer on, they were um, getting in a contract, non-contingent, 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 right? I talked to other people in other markets like, wait, 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 non-contingent offers? Places like East Contra Costa County, like, wait a minute, we don't see non-contingent offers up here. And so like you saw this, like this wave of non-contingent offers, $200,000, $300,000 over. But now I'm seeing offers get accepted with contingencies and not as aggressive of offer writing that we saw four to six months ago. So I've definitely seen a slowdown in non-contingent offers in the recent months. Ernesto, you had your hand up, brother, go ahead. Yeah, I was just gonna say, I really, really respect the degree to which Eric knows the San Francisco market, um, the amount of inventory that is coming in, uh, what percentage things are closing at above ask, things like that. Uh, I think there's a real danger in sharing just really, really generic market stats. Like if all of us shared keeping current matters, so, whoa, I thought you said the market was cooling and that's not the case. You know, you're speaking to East, Co uh, East Contra Costa County. I'm working with a buyer right now. And we're, we're very, very focused on kind of that Albany, El Cerrito, Berkeley area. And it's still silly hot. Like yesterday, we put in an offer for a two bed, one bath, 742 square foot house that me and looking at the comps, I'm thinking there is no chance in hell this goes over nine. And I think they got an offer at, at a million. So my point here is being really hyper local to the area you want to be an expert at, I think is super important. And I just, I, I admire Eric's uh, knowledge of San Francisco, because if I had questions on San Francisco, I'm probably hopping on the phone and talking to Eric. Totally. Absolutely. And, and that El Cerrito, El Sobrante, um, Berkeley markets, we're not going to see a slowdown. Right, try to find a two bedroom, one bath in Poets Corner that doesn't go for two hundred thousand, hundred thousand dollars over. I mean, good luck because I, I haven't seen that. It's it's crazy town, and so you're right. Everything has to be hyper local and hyper specific. Cool. So I, I love this. Um, let's see, uh, Damian, you've been working with clients. You're seeing, you know, tons of activity. What's uh, what are you seeing? What are some patterns that you're seeing with the clients that you are working with right now? I really just wanted to echo what Ernesto was just saying um, about the market. You really want to be careful to make sure that you're specific about um, how you speak about 
different <laughs> different uh different locations because the rule doesn't apply for every single city so like i'm working with this buyer that, that i have in contract in vallejo now that we started out looking in richmond and like uh oakland hills area but the home that they were looking for was two hundred thousand dollars cheaper across the carquinez bridge you know what i mean so the it changes according to proximity. So you, you want, again, as agents, we just want to be careful and be mindful of how the market is changing, you know, just a city away or just a few miles away because, you know, again, things are different in different cities. So it might be a little less hot in another city, but that's where you find the advantage at for your, for your clients. Totally. And, and I'm really glad that we're having this, this talk and, and, and good insight from everybody because Sometimes when we set the stage with the client, they're going to hang on to that initial conversation. Well, Damian, you said that I can get a house that it's slowing down and it's not going well over asking. Yeah, that wasn't in Vacaville, right? That's in Concord, right? That, well, that's in Vacaville, not Concord. And like helping them understand that every single market is its own science project, right? Every single offer that we write, we're going to look at the data and we're going to look intensely at the data. Each of you, when you pull your comps and you run your, uh, your data on, on Bridge or whatever association you're with, you need to show the clients how many offers were written on each home that went into contract and is sold. The reason being is that you're starting able for them to see that type of activity and the type of competition that's going to be in that area. Um, if you guys don't have that, make sure to add that field to when you're pulling your data that you got to share that field with them, showing them how many offers on each home it's going to let them know like, oh, okay, wow, that's, that's, you know, that's, that's an eye opener. Ernesto, let's go to you, bud. I'm good all over my hands, sorry. Oh, okay. Okay, cool. Cool. I love this. I love this. So I know uh, PK, you've been working with clients. You've been out seeing homes. What are some things and some patterns that you're seeing with the clients that you're working with? Um, honestly, the markets that I've been working in, which is um, Oakland Hills and Piedmont, there's no change uh, significantly at all. I mean, if anything, um, there's still a lot of competition. Um, I was actually just looking at a house in Piedmont and talking to another agent from a different brokerage because he also was writing on that house and we both um, landed on the number 3 million and the house is uh, listed for 2349. Um, and, you know, both of our buyers kind of just said, no, this is because the house has a lot of work as well, but it's in Piedmont. So, um, you know, buyers and consumers for those particular markets they're still eager to get into it and nothing has changed um, at all since uh, summer or beginning of summer, even last year. So still pretty busy and competitive. And, and look, look at where she is. I mean, Piedmont, Piedmont, people want to live there. Why? Because of the school districts, right? Some of the best school districts around. And so there's going to be those, those neighborhoods that the perceived value is always going to win. Is this house worth $400,000 if an appraiser or $4 million when an appraiser comes out? No, but the perceived value is me and my family and my children want to live here and grow. And we want to walk down Piedmont Ave. We want to have coffee and we want to go to the shops. So there's perceived value. There's some communities where perceived value is always going to win. There's some areas and some communities that it's never going to be about a deal. In some areas and some communities, it's going to be a status play right? You have to think about that. I want to live there because I want to be a per, part of a certain socio, uh, uh, a, a certain demographic, right? And so it's not always about the best deal. It's about who you are dealing with, where you are showing them homes, and you, you'll see these different like variations. So PK, I love that you said that. Um, let's go over to Cynthia. Cynthia, you're dealing with clients. You're super busy. What are some things that you're seeing in your respective markets and some patterns and some trends that you're seeing? Oh, I love these questions. Um, I love this topic today. You guys all know your stuff so much um, and it's so critical. So in Martinez, what we're seeing is that, I mean, unless the home's overpriced, it's still selling just like it was this summer. It really is. Um, the homes that are just sitting are ones that have 
pretty huge issues, you know, foundation issues, won't qualify for anything but a hard conventional loan or hard money cash. That's what I'm seeing. And then I'm also seeing that buyers are reading the national papers. And like Ernesto was saying, that we're sending them information from, say, Keeping Current Matters. And they're seeing, well, there's a cool down. Why am I still having to go 75000 over asking if you just sent me this article about a cool down? So I've actually stopped sending the KCM to everyone. And I only send it to folks where I know that information is specific to that market. So yeah, we have to be super cognizant of it. And then something I want to share too, is that when I do my buyer's consultation, what I've been starting to do now is if I know someone's unrealistic, I just straight out show them the MLS. I'll say, you know, Hey, Elias, let's pop on really quick. If you've got two extra minutes, Let's hop on the MLS. Let's take a look and see how many homes in Martinez there are under 500,000 that have potential for ADU that are going to take FHA. And once we start scrolling, they're like, oh, wait, there hasn't been anything since like 2017. And I tell them, yeah, you're exactly right. Martinez is not the market to do this right now. So let's go find out where we can go do that. Totally. I absolutely love it. And you know, you guys like talking about the framework, this, this conversation needs to be had in the initial consultation, right? They need to understand that they're working with an area expert and an area professional. I'll give you a quick, um, a glimpse at this. Can, can you guys see my screen? Um, all right. So, so I, this is Martinez. These are some, um, old comps, but this kind of goes in, in, in alignment with what Cynthia was saying. Um, this is everything that it's sold. Obviously, these people are in their home. They're happy. They've grown in equity. So on the far column next to how sold, and then it says number of offers, you can see the competition in this neighborhood. Um, on line three, there was 17 offers on that home. On line 12, there was four offers on that home. On the line 11, there's three offers. So there's multiple offers on these homes. You can look at the prices and determine, okay, well, based on what's going on, if there were 17 offers on that home, only one of them got accepted. Where are those other 16 buyers at? And it really helped them understand what's going on. Always lead with your data in that particular area because everything is a science project. The recipe may be different for Walnut Creek than it is for Concord. You have to make sure to know your data and really dive into the numbers and stats. Uh, so let's continue this conversation. I think that we're having some really good conversation here. Uh, let's go over to Freddie. Freddie, what are you seeing in your respective market, clients that you're working with, patterns that you're experiencing, and some nuances that you're seeing from your vantage point? All right, Freddie, you're not there. So uh, host way, let's go. Yeah, sorry, what was the question again? So what are some things that you're seeing in your market, some trends in the market, some changes that you're seeing in the real estate market right now from your vantage point? Well, something that I've been telling my clients is that, um, I mean, we're in the best market right now. We still, uh, we see a little cool down on the market, but it doesn't mean our prices are dropping. And also we see that we have the interest rate is still low. So we have like, we have best opportunity to win offers right now because uh, we have a little more inventory and we have a lot of uh, buyer fatigue. So that means in that combination, we, it, it looks like um, it's cooling down, but it doesn't mean the market is still not uh, competitive. Uh, it, that means we have more opportunities to win offers. Um, also, we um, like last week. I have two buyers that they're they told me they want to um, hold off on putting offers because they want to wait for prices to drop. So I kind of explain them what is more important. Like let's say worst case scenario, prices drop ten percent. What is more important, price or payment? Because um, it looks like the interest rate might go up next year. So what is more important right now? Like get price or, or payment because if, if interest goes up like let's say one percent next year and on a price of six hundred thousand dollars we're talking about like five hundred dollars more on payment 
So in 30 years, I mean, we we paying a lot of more money than what prices uh, the the property is worth right now. So it's very important to kind of know what's happening on the market. Love it, love it, Josue. I appreciate it. I think Ernesto, you got your hand up again, brother. Go ahead. Oh, yeah. I was just gonna say. Um, it does relate to the market, but it's not numbers driven. I think sometimes it helps to keep an eye out on, on laws that are that have been recently changed or are, are in the funnel. Uh, for me, Proposition 19 for property taxes for people over 55, that's a big one that I get a lot of questions on and I leverage. Another one that we might just want to kind of get in front of um, that I think is going to govern Newsom's desk sometime soon is SB9. SB9 is going to make it really, really easy for people to subdivide their lots. So that's one thing that I was discussing with my buyers yesterday on that offer that we put in. This is a super, super desirable lot. It's 5,000 square feet. It's near a BART station. Who knows? Maybe people already know about this law. And they're already getting ahead of it and they plan on buying this home and then subdividing it. And the way the home is laid out on the property, it's going to be extremely easy to do that. Just kind of fence it down the middle and maybe sell it off or put down an ADU, what have you. But uh, as it relates to understanding the market, keeping tabs on uh, statewide and maybe even local laws uh, might be helpful. Man, love it. Love it. Let's go over to iPhone. iPhone, you have your hand up and then Eric will come over to you. And and sorry, when it says iPhone, I just don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's Quan. <laughs> yeah, sorry, man. Um, yeah, I apologize. It was a little bit loud out here. Um, so what I'm seeing in the uh, the Brentwood Delta market uh, specifically is uh, it seems like it's more tiered uh, depending on the kind of the price range of the homes. If you're looking at a starter home anywhere, say between the 500 to the 700, you know, range, uh, there's still a lot of competition. You can still easily see double digit offers, um, you know, and the prices are still uh, pretty much, you know, as it was, you know, uh, the beginning of summertime. Um, but if you're looking at homes that are, say, in the 800s and up, we're starting to see a slowdown in terms of the number of offers uh, it's sitting longer in, in terms of number of days on the market. Um, and we're actually starting to see a decrease in prices. Uh, for example, there's a home that we looked at uh, uh, with a buyer yesterday. Uh, you know, it was uh, at, uh, what was it? It was seven, uh, it was 975. And then, uh, you know, and they didn't see anything happen within two weeks. And then now they dropped down to 925. And there's really nothing wrong with that home. It's actually, you know, pretty custom in terms of the in size turn turnkey. So that's kind of uh, what I'm seeing in the market. And then in terms of inventory, not really an increase in inventory at all. The inventory seems to be pretty leveled out right now. Wow, man. Really, really appreciate it. Good stuff. Actually, Eric, I'll come back to you in a second and go to Roxanne. Honey, you had your hand up. Let's go over to you ladies first. Hey, hey. Good hey. morning. My team fast family. Hey, mm -hmm. Everybody's talking about buyers, and I want to touch a little bit on setting the expectation for your seller. And I want to set this based on two listings. I just listed in Vacaville. So me coming here from the Bay Area real estate market and being really familiar with, hey, you're going to get a non-contingent offer, you know, let's list at this price, much less than what we think it's going to go for, because buyers already have that expectation to bid higher. Well, when I went to Vacaville, it's completely opposite. So I had to know that it's so different. And the what I did was I called all the agents around the proximity of where I was pulling my comparable sales. I asked them what type of offers were coming in. And what I found was in Vacaville, yes, people have contingencies. You're going to see a lot of VA. You're going to see a lot of FHA. So when I was setting the stage for my seller, I let them know we're in an area where I'm not going to tell you you're going to get a fully non-contingent offer, conventional 18-day close, right? So I've already prepared them. But let me tell you another thing. I have two listings next door to each other. The sell, Both sellers are my past clients, okay? I listed one with intention. Let's list this one first and see what happens before I list the second one. The first one I listed an agent. I set the stage now that there'll be contingencies, there'll be FHA, there'll be VA, and we will list close to what we think it's going to go for. You do not list 100000 less, okay? So I listed actually at the highest last sold comp, and we still killed it. 30000 over list price out there is like spectacular. 
spectacular, but we did all the marketing. We brought in all the photography. We did what other agents don't do out there. And we just set the highest comp. We got an offer, no contingencies, conventional, quick close, but the agent was from San Francisco. So now this agent already has the mindset to come in like that. I kind of had the mindset that's what I would get, but I knew not in back of bill and I set that stage. But I say that to say it's all about where are the agents coming from that's bringing the offer and who are you hiring to sell your house? What are they used to, right? Now, the second house, we sold that one and then I put the second one on right next door, completely opposite, full contingencies, FHA um, financing. And I called the agent. I'm like, why do you guys have a financing contingency? Aren't you like pre-approved? She's like, well, why wouldn't we have a loan contingency? So I was kind of like, uh, well, you know, but I had to take a step back and remember in Vacaville, that's how they roll completely different mindset. She thought I was nuts that I'm asking her to remove the finance contingency. I'm thinking she's nuts that she needs one, but long story short, we got it done. Two houses next door to each other, same exact location, two completely different buyers coming from two different buyer agents, a Vacaville agent and a San Francisco agent. So I just say that to say like, our mindset out here, if you're going to go list somewhere else, call those other agents and, and just show your seller too. Like, hey, this is what's happening. I do not list homes way less than what I think they're going to go for when I get out to Solano County, period. I mean, it's well said, Roxanne, and just it goes along with what everyone's saying. It's just really understanding the, the nuances of that market, right? Um, I was wa- working with Aaliyah yesterday and she's about to write an offer. And there was like six pending. I'm like, you need to call those pendings and you need to ask the buyer's agent, you know, what were they up against? How many offers? What are they in contract at to really determine where you're going to come in at? So doing that research and calling around, I, I, I think this is this is this is something that you guys definitely need to add to your arsenal. So Roxanne, I appreciate yeah. that. Yeah, I think um, it should be part of your listing presentation. Totally, absolutely. Uh, Eric, let's go over to you, brother. Hey, to piggyback off on what some of the folks were saying about the buyers that are saying, you know, when's a good time to buy and should I wait? One thing that I've kind of one little um, script that I use is um, and look at the data first before you kind of spew this out in case you get challenged. But the the interest rates really follow the market. And so if it's a hot, hot market, the interest rates are going to go down. And when the market's bad, the interest rates go up. And if you just type in uh, in, and on a you know, mortgage calculator, let's say a million dollar house, for example, at 3% versus at 4%, that's $150,000 difference by the time you pay the house off. So I kind of explain that to people like, if you're going to wait for a slow market in a year from now and be like, oh, wow, look, this million dollar house is $150,000 cheaper. It's like, yeah, but the interest rates went up a point. So you just burned a year of your life paying rent and you just played yourself kind of don't say that aggressive, but that's kind of the analogy I, I like to give to prep first timers on hot versus cold markets and how it does not really matter for a first timer. Totally, totally. And, and I think people, you know, there's always going to be this fear, but you could run like you could run historic comps. Let's say if you guys ran comps from five years ago and you did the same way that you run comps right now, six months back. Well, you did it for a year, um, let's say five years ago compared to this last year. You could show people in Dublin what homes or wherever you're at, what homes have gained in value and equity over the last five years. And so um, I love this, Eric. Let's go to Janique. Janique, you've had your hand up. Let's roll over to you. I'm in the car. Hi. Um, hi, Lil. So the Adams Point area for condos, um, it has been pretty transparent that the agents give information. You know, they say how many offers are going to come in. They are telling, you know, what the sellers are expecting. Um, one condo uh, was a climber, and she actually told me that uh, what the seller was expecting, and they would have had 10 thousand in equity because the unit right below um sold for x amount so it's kind of refreshing uh for the condo market in adams point there's a lot available but units are different like there's literally a one bedroom on lakeshore for 369 which i thought was super crazy but it's out there there's deals for first time home buyers if you know if they want to get into the condo market get some equity and then move up later love it absolutely love it great stuff uh, let's go over to jane jane let's hear from you what are some nuances what are some patterns what are some things that you're seeing 
with your buyers. You've been in this game for a while. So Jane, let's hear from you. Same here. So in Castro Valley and Hayward and everything, I'm still seeing a lot of buyers active, a lot of offers. Um, we're not as transparent as you know Adam's point, but you know we don't get to find out how many offers are coming in, but we get to find out um, disclosure wise, like how many people are looking at the disclosures. Um, yeah, I haven't really seen a big big slowdown like in Livermore or anything. Um, working with buyers, I mean. It still looks like we're still having to compete. Um, the contingency is still there. Um, yeah, I mean, I haven't really seen that much of a slowdown. Maybe I need to concentrate more where people are talking about like in Vacaville and stuff. <laughs> but in my market, I mean, I, I'm still continuing to do the same. Good, I love it. Aliyah, I'm gonna go over to you. Aliyah has been on multiple listing presentations um i'll actually come back to Aaliyah. she's away Aaliyah, can you hear me Aaliyah going once Aaliyah going twice all right i'll wait till she comes back to the screen uh but patrick patrick's over in the berkeley market newer agent but obviously you're still getting your feet mat feet wet what are some things that you're learning what are some things that you're hearing what are some patterns that you're notice that noticing uh really just knowing like your local market to the team in terms of data and just general knowledge of just the trends and just keeping up to date with like uh, on local agents so you have like better data to fall back on when you're talking to potential totally. buyers sellers totally man super super crucial to your success okay. Aliyah, are you there i saw you go into the frame come out of the frame Aliyah going once hence why i love the cameras on uh, so let's go to Amy Palin. Amy Palin. Oh, uh, Kelly O'Gorman, go ahead. Hello. Um, What's up? How are you? I'm good. Sorry, I've been kind of in and out. I'm uh, about to go through the process of counter offers on an offer I submitted last night. Nice. Um, yeah, but so what I wanted to say was uh, we submitted an offer on a townhouse in Pleasant Hill. And uh, every all of the comps, they had like five and six offers over the course of the last three, four, five months. Um, and this one, they did all of the updates. It's beautiful inside, uh, turnkey, and they only got two offers. So uh, things are definitely changing out here. Um, yeah, that's and what for, I- For the people that don't know out here, so what, what market specifically? Um, I would say probably Pleasant Hill, Lafayette, Arenda, Moraga, Walnut Creek. Um, yeah, awesome. yeah, definitely. Awesome. I was also, um, touring clients out in the Brentwood, Antioch, Oakley market last weekend. And there's definitely stuff that's sitting on the market a lot longer than it was when, when you and I and Jen were, were touring with our family. So, um, yeah, shifting. Cool. Love it. Love the update. Uh, let's go over to Austin. Austin, uh, what are some things that you're seeing? You're obviously grinding, you're working with clients. What are some things that you're noticing right now? So um, last weekend, I did two open houses. Both were in Oakland. Um, the first one that I did had absolutely nobody show up. And Nicole had gone last week as well. And she had the exact same thing. So two weeks in a row, nobody came to the open house on this one. And then on Sunday, I went to another one, I believe off of 16th Street and still had nobody show up. So I feel like in the Oakland area, at least the houses are probably sitting a little longer. I know one was at 14 days and the other was at 21. And all of I heard in all of July and August was houses were closing in 14, 16 days, some crazy stuff like that. So I think it is maybe not necessarily slowing down with the buyers, but the buyers are getting a little bit more fatigued and starting to just kind of, I think, be more looky lose than anything else. And at least in the <laughs> Berkeley area, anytime I go on home snap every day, I'll see like three or four new properties come up and they're all still in the mid to low millions. So I think that it's not necessarily slowing down, but I think people are kind of taking their eyes off of certain areas and moving to others. Wow, Matt, really astute. I really, really appreciate your insight. Let's go to Amy Palin. Amy Palin, what are some things that you're seeing? You're in a different market, you're in the peninsula. What are some nuances and some patterns that you're recognizing? Hi, yeah. Uh, thank you. Um, well, I was looking at a, a lot of the data this morning. We're very similar to the San Francisco market and our median house price is really high. It's 1.8. Um, but I was trying to get um, a feel for some neighborhoods in, um, in the Half Moon Bay because every little 
area is so different. So you really have to dial, talk about like dialing in on your area. Um, so what I noticed is the this, this houses are still really competitive. I mean, some of them are going for $600,000 over. So that that's amazing that the, the, the sale price is so much different from the list price. So we're still in that really competitive hot um, and houses are they're staying on the market a little bit longer from like it went from like 17 days. Now we're all the way into 14 days. And but also it's exciting, like in San Francisco, we have a bunch more inventory. So a bunch of more houses popped up and like um, the we do a broker's tour on Tuesdays. And this Tuesday we had six houses and that hasn't happened in a long time. So that's really exciting. Yeah, And I love it. And, and Amy is in the peninsula. And once again, Peninsula is going to always be a place that the prices are going to be driven by perceived value. You know, go to places like Los Gato, San Mateo, people, it's it's a status play for a lot of people. They're they're willing to pay X amount over because they want the opportunity to live there and say they live there. And over time, their, their investment's going to continue to grow. Um, so really good stuff. I love this. Let's go to two more people. Um, I don't know. I know, Aaliyah, you were busy. I called on you, but I could come back to you. Um, but I know you've been on quite a few listed appointments lately. You're working on an offer right now. Did you submit it last night? I did. Did we get it? I don't know. This agent is weird. Like she doesn't respond back. She has her assistant answering her phone calls. So I followed up with her and was like, send me your receipt of the, you know, offer that you received it. But this agent's weird. So I don't know. All right. Well, hence why it's been on the market for a while. She's probably not the best communicator, but what are some things that you're seeing? Uh, what are some things that you're experiencing on the sell side or the buy side? Um, I mean, I don't really have anything different to say than everybody else. Uh, we're all seeing, a, a, well, in Oakland, like I'm seeing less offers, um, contingent offers, whereas before I was seeing non-contingent offers for everything um on the sell side it's still i mean it's still good prices aren't dropping we're just getting less offers which is still fine um as long as we're getting that price that we want um and let me ask a quick question for the people that don't know how are you getting these listing appointment opportunities open houses mostly yeah, yeah huge 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 opportunity because if you get neighbors coming in obviously they're going to be a little bit curious but uh there's a huge play i say every single open house if it's not a condo you guys should be like tripling down on your efforts it's knocking on the doors once twice three times almost four times uh for one open house and letting them know the status of the house and you know becoming a part of that neighborhood so it's obviously working for you and you're going on tons of appointments and those appointments are going to eventually lead to you stacking the listings. Um, so good stuff. Good stuff. Don't hate on the condos now, okay? <laughs> no, 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 no. I, when we're talking about knocking on doors, if they're doing open houses, because some HOAs don't let you knock on all the doors oh, like you would for, yeah. like well, for a single family residence. I live in a condo and I went knocking on the doors and I brought bags of candy. And I Hell yeah, you bags did. Of candy, but, and I got my list. <laughs> that's going on the market on friday <laughs> that's right i'm telling you guys there is opportunities uh some of the high rises is going to be a little harder but if there's an opportunity for you guys give you a hard door, time of life. <laughs> you, you ask for ask for forgiveness later right just go fucking knock on their door so i totally agree so let's go to jim jim let's hear from you brother what are some things that you're seeing tons of experience tons of game let's hear from you my man what are some things that you have noticed and seen um you know, I haven't really been in the game for a while, but uh, I've been kind of keeping up through uh, Realtor.com, and I'm trying to concentrate in the San Leandro area. And what I've been seeing with uh, some of the, um, the listings going up is uh, there was a lot of price decreases, um, and I'm just kind of speculating that the decreases are because we're coming off the summer and uh, things are slowing down a little bit. And uh, those people that listed their house during the summer um, just realized that uh, things are slowing down and they're deciding with their, their agent to uh, decrease the price a little. Um, so that's what I'm kind of okay. seeing. 
And I, I think it all depends. It depends on what part of San Leandro. Uh, we actually just closed on a house in San Leandro. We represented a buyer and then we represented a seller. And on both scenarios, um, you know, we went well over asking on our buy side, and then uh, we got one hundred twenty nine thousand dollars over asking. It wasn't actually in Assumption Parish. It's called Upper Bow or Upper Ball, which is really close. Mm -hmm. And so it just really depends on what part of of San Leandro. Um, you know, what's the bedroom size? What's the back uh, backyard look like? Um, so I'm definitely seeing some competition still in San Leandro, but I think it's all it's all you know relevant to where it is. Uh, Cynthia, you had your hand up. Oh, you didn't. Okay, okay, cool. You guys, really, really good conversation today. I'm loving this conversation. I'm loving all of your guys' thoughts, your guys' insight, and the way that you guys are studying. So. Um, I, I definitely, definitely encourage you guys to really get familiar with how to uh, pull the data from the MLS and get really, really, um, you know, like be able to dial in that information to where you can truly, truly present it in a way that you understand the data and then you can help your clients understand what's going on in these different neighborhoods. Staying current on all of the updates that we put in the um, market updates channel on Slack Give yourself that opportunity to really go in and understand that information, break it down on a local level, on a national level. I think what Ernesto said was really astute that knowing what type of ordinances and what type of laws are going to be passed and how that's going to affect consumer behavior, those things are really important. And then also, you guys, really understanding and embracing technology. And I want to stay on this for a quick minute. I wrote here that pandemic confirmed for us that technology will always have a stronghold on, on the future of real estate. The relationships that you build with people that you'll never be able to take that away. They'll never be able to take away the human part of this, but learning how to leverage technology is something that really catapulted our business last year, especially uh, not only here at Fast Real Estate, but uh, in the industry at large. So I want to encourage you guys, if you don't feel like you're tech savvy, if there's things that you don't know much about, then take this opportunity to say, you know what, I want to learn about HomeBot. I want to learn how to um, you know, to create more video. There's one thing I can go and create a tour and be like, hey guys, this is a one bedroom or two bedroom, one bath. It's located in blah, blah, blah. Well, if they don't see you, it's like, I can get that information from going to Zillow. I can get that information from going to realtor.com. But what, that, what I want them to see is I want them to see Cynthia's face. I want them to see Roxanne's face. I want them to see Austin's face because not only now are they seeing this beautiful house, but I like Eric Throm. I like the way he communicates. I like the way that he's pre presents. He's somebody that I can see myself doing business with. So take this opportunity to reach people the way that they want to receive information. Use technology to your advantage. Don't look at it as a hindrance to what we do. Consumers have more information than they've ever had at their fingertips. If you're creating a video tour, what's different with that information than what they can get on their, on their own? So I want you guys to get in the habit of turning that camera around, having them see you, your personality, your quirkiness, the crazy hair, the big hair, whatever it is. Like, I want them to see who you are as a person because that's what's going to get them to say, you know what? I like that person. I can do business with that person. So don't be afraid of this, you guys. I know that this is trepidatious for a lot of us. Turn that shit around. You guys are all beautiful in your own way. Let the consumer see who you are. Roxanne, I'm gonna go over to you. You had your hand up. Real quick, I just want to share with my brothers and sisters on the line really quickly. So, so that little chocolate uh, candy pass note I did for you guys for your open house, go door knocking and pass out a little bag of candy with your card and tell them it's a sweet time to sell. Ooh, I <laughs> love that. If you're shy like me, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Have them at your open house, little bags of candy with your card that has the little note, it's a sweet time to sell since all the neighbors are going to come see your open house. And it's just like super fun. That's all. I just wanted to throw that in. A little something for us all get listings. Let's win. Let's win. I love it. See so you guys, if, if Roxanne knocked on your door and said it's a sweet time to sell some chocolate, what, are you going to be mad at her? But probably not. You're like, all right, at, at least it's going to provoke some thought. And, and, and I think that that's, that's a great idea. I absolutely love it. So you guys, let's hear a couple quick takeaways before we end the session. We'll go to Sandy Cruz. Sandy Cruz, what were some takeaways from today's sesh? Um, okay, so 
I didn't even really think about this, but I love the idea of being of going using the MLS to pull reports to like really hyper focus on like little micro areas. Um, there's just so many possibilities, and um, I love now having that like tool in my toolbox. I think it'll really help me because I've been sort of struggling like with keeping up with the market updates, and I think if I can just like run some reports and like look at the data it's my brain will compute that better <laughs> um and then you'll start like developing patterns like okay i know what's up in adam's point i know what's up in maxwell park i know what's up in poet's corner i know what's up in in the assumption parish you'll start to like notice patterns and then you'll be able to use that as time goes on so it's and you're new you're like you're just loading your library up right now yep Yep, brand new. I'm real excited because I'm going today to do my first like little tour with a friend who is turned looking to be likely my very first client and we're going to Vallejo and uh, two of the places we're looking at offers are due like tomorrow so we might maybe figure something out in the next day i don't know but i'm excited Ooh. about that all right well hey if you need help with anything let me know but i love this love this love this candace let's go over to you candace as our guest here um what were some takeaways from today's session um really like the market is just you know how it's so so cliche but you know everyone is like oh the market here the market here but it's really like different everywhere so yeah. i think it's just important to just focus on where your niche is um where you want to focus on and be an expert at that area to me um versus trying to figure out what the market is everywhere because it's different everywhere so and everyone's going to have an opinion on what's going on so just focus on where you want to sell i for me i'm going to focus on where i want to sell and just become an expert in that area so totally. and then you know what it's just uh, you could go a neighborhood over in oakland you can it'll go, be different yeah you could go 10 blocks up you're in seminary mm -hmm. versus going over to Maxwell Park and have a price range of 1.2 versus a price range of yeah. 650, right? It's crazy, right? Yeah, so and I also I also yeah. agree with you that those hotspot areas, so I'm from the Bay Area and I kind of know, like I know the hotspots. I know like the Piedmont is hot, the Oakland Hills is hot. Those are going to be always places people want to live um, versus, you know, um, East Oakland or something like that, you know? <laughs> so you just kind of know those hot spots. So that's important. So those markets definitely will be different than, um, you know, say if like a Fremont or something like that. So, but, totally. but the takeaway for me is like, just focus on, pick an area, focus on that, be an expert in that area first for me anyway. Love it, love it, love it. Let's go over to Lauren Howard. Lauren Howard, um, let's hear some takeaways from today's session from you. Loved it. Um, okay. <laughs> Sorry, guys. I am currently in the process of moving, so I wish I could show my uh, crazy face, um, but you don't. Y'all don't want to see this mess. Um, but I loved. I loved listening in today. Um, just because I am currently, I just currently moved into the San Francisco market, so I loved hearing um, just some updates on that that will get me really going into doing my own further investigations. Um, and I just really appreciate it. Thanks for, thanks for sharing. Awesome. Awesome. And thanks for being here. I hope the move's going well. PK, let's bring it full circle. Let's go to you. Takeaways from today's session. I'm going to have you take us off the field today. And Derek, I'll be yeah. right with you, brother. Okay. So I would say that, um, I love Wednesdays when we get to talk about market because um, some of us are super focused and narrow in one area and not really um, know what's happening outside of our little bubble. So it's really good to get that bigger picture of what is happening in um, the entire market of Re uh, Bay Area. Um, I would say kind of like, I wanted to highlight what Roxanne said. Roxanne said, uh, if you knock on someone's door and you have a smile on your face, even though you're wearing a mask, Aliyah and I did a lot of door knocking on Monday. Um, was it Monday? Yes, Monday. And to be honest with you, it was very like, it was, it was nice for the most part. Like a lot of people were super nice. There was like one or two people that were just kind of odd, but like, 
they were just weird as like human beings. It wasn't anything towards us. Um, somebody opened their like super nice, you guys, this house was like the, a mansion in like Piedmont. She opened her gate. We went inside her front yard and we're just like, okay, so what is happening? She came out and she was like talking. She gave us her number and her email address. Like literally, I mean, we were just like, what is happening right now? So people are, you know, if you're nice and you have a good reason to be knocking at the, on their doors, like there's nothing to be afraid of and there's nothing to stop us from doing it. Um, it's best to get in front of the people that you want to meet and, um, you know, make an impression and also just get in front of them. It's the best time to uh, start farming and also uh, get listings because being a buyer's agent, agent can be exhausting and we don't want to be buyer's agents forever. Um, so with that being said, am I taking them off the field? You are. Yeah, okay. Just Wednesday, it's hump day. It's time to hustle and get ready for um, ending this week, going into a, hopefully a busy weekend because that's when we make a lot of our, um, you know, offers and money. At this, it, it's on the weekend, so let's not slow down. Let's keep on going and finish this week really, really strong. I hope everyone has a really good uh, Wednesday. Uh, all together and it's a little bit cooler in Oakland Hills. So hopefully you get to go out there and knock on doors because it's not as hot as it was on Monday. Can you can you do a slap of the bicep really quick for everybody? <laughs> <laughs> can you do a, a Kyle Heidley slap of the bicep? <laughs> no, that's not my <laughs> <point. No. laughs> uh, We appreciate you guys. Thank you once again for being here, for always being committed to your success. Thank you for all of your insight. I, I fucking love it. I absolutely love all your thoughts, your insight, and your dialogue. So let's continue these sessions. See you guys back here on Friday. Have a wonderful day. Derek, you can stay on. You and I will connect. So thank you guys for being here. Peace. Derek, my man, already dressed to impress. What's up? You're muted, bro. Can you hear me? I can. How you doing? Pretty good. Just a little nervous about this. I don't know why. <laughs> uh, nervous about our time together? Yeah. Why so? Um, just because I didn't really know what to expect. Well, no. So, so the first, the, I just wanted to kind of connect with you to see like where you're at. It sounds like you have a lot of your onboarding stuff taking I'm just removing people from the room. All of your onboarding stuff is like out of the way. Mm -hmm. okay and is there anything that you haven't set up yet did you set up real scout did you set up your slack did you just set up um you know the tech stack and all the tools that you're going to be using with us um i don't think i did all the tech stuff but i did want access to um chime okay. just because i feel like i do need a crm and then i tried setting up kv core but that didn't really work Oh. What do you mean it didn't work out? Um, I think I need to reach out to EXP to have them activate my account or something. Yeah, it, it usually takes about two to three days. Yeah. Yeah, and so um, Chime, it, we generally use Chime for all of our company-generated leads, like our Zillow leads and past leads that we're are unconverted. Um, but you can have, you have a choice to use either one of them. Whatever's easier for you, you have a choice to use them. They're both, we, we obviously pay for Chime for you. And Mm -hmm. EXP is that's part of the um, the brand as you get the KV core. But first things first, um, I want you to get all of those things out of the way. Do you did you already have you gone through the buyer's presentation? Have you ordered your headshots? Have you ordered your business cards and all those things? Uh, I sent my headshot to Molly. I don't know okay. if she ordered business cards yet. Okay, cool. Awesome. Um, I did want to do the buyer presentation with you. Cool. Awesome. So um, unfortunately, I can't do it right now. I forgot that I have my second shot today, and I totally forgot that I have my second shot. So um, have you watched any of the buyer's presentations yet? Um, no, I don't know where to go to watch those. All right, cool. So let's start here, and I'm glad that we're having this conversation. So let's do this. The first thing that I want you to do before you and I do a buyer's presentation, because I want you to know kind of the flow. Um, have you done a buyer's consultation in the past at all? Uh, yes. Okay, cool. So bring all the stuff that you normally would use and what you would normally do. 
but there's a couple in here um, in the Slack channel, just go or in Slack, just put buyer's consultation. You'll see uh, ones that I've done here. You'll see talking about the market. You'll see a buyer's consultation with Dewey and Kenny. You'll see one that I did with Walter. You'll see Eric's here, Julie. Um, I highly, highly recommend that you go through some of these just so you can get an idea of the flow and the tempo. How many buyers have you put in the contract in the past? Um, do new constructions count? Uh, yeah, that's working with the buyer for sure. Uh, then four. Okay, cool. Awesome, awesome. And where did you come from? What what company did you come from? Realty One. Where which which market? Um, it's from the San Ramon office. Oh, okay. All right, cool. And I don't know if we met before you came on. Did you just meet with Kenny on Zoom, or did we all, all three of us meet? Uh, it was just Kenny. Okay. Um, Perfect. I did go to the office a couple times. Yeah. That, so I think Kenny didn't really interview me. Okay. <laughs> just, and I met you at the um at the JVM event last week as well, right? Yeah. You there? Okay, cool, cool. So let's do this. I'm gonna have you just practice your buyer flow. Um, what we'll do is you and I will hop on a Zoom call just like this. Usually it takes about 30 minutes uh, okay. for you to go through and like work with me as if I was your client. Tell mm -hmm. me, you know, what to expect, what the buying process is, what happens when I submit an offer, what what uh, an EMD is, what protects the EMD, what are contingencies, really just take me through start to finish what a buying process looks like for a consumer today, right? Okay. Also talk about your strategy. So um, take the next couple of days to kind of put that all together. I anticipate being sick tomorrow. I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm a big baby. I don't know if I'm going to be sick, but I anticipate being sick already in my mind. But I do have some availability on Friday. If that works for you, I have a Friday at one o'clock or I have a Friday at um, 1.30 or I have a 6.30 on Friday. Just either of those times work for you? Uh, 1 p.m. works. 1 p.m. Okay, perfect. I'm going to put this on the calendar right now. And then while I have you, is there any pressing questions that you have right now? Mm -hmm. Nothing that I can think of. Okay, cool. So, so you you feel like you're off the hook. <laughs> <today>? <laughs> well, I thought today was going to be the buyer presentation. So, well, it, and, and and it would be normally, but if you haven't watched the buyer's presentation, I, I don't want you to go through it just yet. I want you to make sure that you have that flow down, that you have a buyer's consultation, that mm -hmm. you edit it, you 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 know put your personal touch on it, um, and then we'll do it. Okay, I did edit like the generic one. Um, yep. I'm putting the calendar invite out right now. All right, Derek, and your emails. Um, uh, Realtor. Derek, uh, fast. Oh yeah, you can use that one too. All right, perfect. All right, so I put this on the calendar um, because I don't think that it would be, ask me later, hold on. I don't think it would be in your best interest because here's what happens. As soon as you nail this presentation, that now gives you a little bit more time to prep. As soon as you nail this presentation, then I'm going to go watch you, the other ones. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to give you um, access to Chime and I'm going to give you a dialer. Chime has 6,000 leads in the lead pond right now. But before I give you access to all those leads, I just want to make sure that you, you know how to explain the buying process. And that's it. And then you have a good flow and then you know, I help you with any areas where you may need some improvement or some polishing points. So let's just go from there. And I forgot that I have to take this damn test today or get the damn shot today. So I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> so yeah, I will see you on Friday. And then if you need anything in the meantime, um, I would say think of myself as like that pre-person. How do I develop my business? How should I put my calendar together? What are the things that I should be doing with my time in order for me to get in a contract? So um, leverage me, lean to me. If you need help building your schedule and mapping everything out on Friday, we'll do that as well. Okay. Okay, Derek. Have a wonderful day, my man. And off the hook for today, but I'll see you on Friday. Okay, see you Friday. Okay, brother. Bye now.